Hey everyone, it's Jamison Cable of the Land Between the Meadows Kentucky History Podcast. I just want to say thank you for your support and listening to this episode. For all the updates on our podcast and YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kentucky History Channel, like and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at KY History Pod. If you're enjoying the podcast, give us a good rating and review on Apple Podcasts or the podcast platform that you're listening to. If you're looking for ways to support the podcast, an easy and simple way is to share it on Facebook or any other social media and tell your friends. You can also go to audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod and get a free book of your choice. And finally, you can visit patreon.com slash kyhistorypod if you want extra content from us. If you're already a patron, thank you for your support. It means so much to us. All the links I've mentioned are in the description of the podcast, so go check them out. Thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode. And remember, if it's not about Kentucky... It ain't worth a hill of beans. Welcome back, everybody, to the Kentucky History Podcast, The Land Between the Meadows. Pass the whiskey. Because <laughs> we made it to a season two. or we, We've been doing this for a year now, if you can believe it. Yeah. Yeah. We're full of lies. <laughs> <laughs> people, people have been listening, which is... Uh, which, which is amazing. Which is don't, amazing. Students don't listen to us in school. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. why in the hell will they listen to us? Yeah, so we really appreciate everybody who's listened and keeps listening. Yeah. Definitely. Don't go to sleep. Uh, yeah, stay awake. Don't. <laughs> this isn't the only episode. Yeah. There will be more. Don't touch that knob. <laughs> but we really appreciate it, and we're, we're glad and humbled uh, by all the reviews that we get from iTunes. If you want to leave a review on iTunes, that's great. We appreciate that, and we're gonna we're gonna read a few of those here in a second. But we've I, had over ten thousand people listen to us. More than that, really? Yes, <laughs> uh, we're 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 up towards fifteen thousand. Wow! So uh, quite that's, we. <laughs> 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 um, and I'll, I'll say, I mean, like fourteen countries. Um, uh, I think about forty. More in states. France and America, I understand. <laughs> Well, no, no. Somebody's Kentucky, really? most, most okay. in Kentucky. Most people are in there Kentucky. There was a time there when we first started that they were all Yeah, French, yeah. And they were dialing so, in. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but oh well. We'll roll with it. Um, but we thank everybody for listening, and we hope you keep listening. And again, if you want to, uh, don't ever hesitate to uh, let us know some topics you would like for us to talk to, and we'll eventually get around to them, hopefully, if... Um, if the time, if we have the time there, we're always uh, looking for ideas. Yeah, you know, it is. Uh, there is loads to talk about, in, as far as Kentucky really goes, is. and you know, sometimes we might just uh, need a little. Hey, why don't you th- talk about this, and we'll find it. Mm-hmm. As long, you know, if we can get back in the libraries full time, and mm-hmm. and things get a little smoother, we'll we'll definitely be able to hit the ground running. Not that we aren't, but it is. It ain't looking smooth now. out there. It, it's not. It ain't looking smooth at all. It's not. It is. Looks like a little turmoil might be <laughs> brewing, brewing our way. <laughs> So, with with that, on um, all fronts, I will say it is September, and if you listen to our previous episode, that which was me talking with Dr. Thais about the uh, her book and the podcast, the Thirty Stories in Thirty Days from uh, Stories from the Underground Railroad, check it out because it will be. It's probably already a few of the episodes have probably already dropped, and. Uh, it'll be going all through September, so check that out, and check out also the Commonwealth podcast, which is uh, by our good friend Landon, and uh, he he has some good guests and stuff on there for you to listen to as well. But I want to talk about some of these reviews because they really hit hit home for us and really help us enjoy or you know really push us forward to um, forward to what <laughs> to uh, or I should say happy hunting ground. Yeah, makes us uh, makes us want to uh, work harder and, and put more Kentucky history out there. But we got one here. Uh, my dad is from a tribe in Oklahoma. They were actually in the area before everyone else was forced there. So native history always fascinates me. 
early American history too. I was raised in the northern Appalachian Mountains, western Pennsylvania, so there's also a lot of connection there. Anyway, great stuff. And this was from Fourth River, and you know, just a good positive uh, review that we that really uh, really helps us out. Have we ever had any bad ones? Really, right? No, no, no. You S O B. No, I can't stand you. <laughs> You're you the biggest know jerks. <laughs> you don't know nothing. <laughs> everything you say is conduct and everything else. <laughs> Uh, no, so far, none, none worded that way, and no, no, no none bad to that extent. I don't believe. Uh, but go ahead. Here's we got another one. It said uh, these two, uh, Mr. Pope and Mr. Cable, are true Kentuckians. Boy, I can tell I like this guy. <laughs> Sweet, gracious, and quick to laugh. But there's also a sturdy stubbornness that's innate in us Kentuckians. That in the words of Mr. Pope. If it ain't about Kentucky, it ain't worth a hill of no beans. They breathe life into the depth and richness of Kentucky's history by way of only as true Kentuckians can, through a smile and telling a story. There you go. Boy, I like that guy. I do, I do. That's that, a, that guy's nice. That's no, what he said. And I, He's, I agree with him 100%. Understand. Especially that sweet stuff and that yeah. gracious. Mm-hmm. And a little stubbornness. I little stubbornness. <laughs> Little, little red mule in uh, But I got I to gotta comment his title on his review of Puker Slop. Yeah, uh, I love it. Puker Slop. <laughs> so, uh, again, if you want to write a review, we appreciate it. Um, uh, you it, know, it Puker Slop was a name for bourbon whiskey that we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you're listening to this, go back. Or if this is your first time listening, go back and listen to some old episodes. If you, ain't, if you ain't listened to us on Puker Slop, you ain't listened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Anyway, I wanted to start off this season two with a few stories uh, from Mr. Pope, and then we'll get into our main little topic here about early kind of settling of Kentucky and so forth. So, Mr. Pope, what do you got? You got a well, good story? Did you, want, did you want a personal story, or did you want one uh, from Kentucky history, or well, does I'll, it I'll, matter? Well, I'll listen to whatever you got. Now, if it's yeah. a personal story, please keep it <laughs> clean. Clean. <laughs> clean as possible. <laughs> there ain't nothing clean. <laughs> Well, you know, one thing, if I think back on my life, one of the uh, star moments was, you know, my, my son and I, uh, we, had, we had bought a little farm over in Boyle County, over on Webster Road, and we had built this beautiful catfish lake. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I didn't have, and I, and I had about five or ten acres of land, and I was going to go to the Lincoln County stockyards to... Um, buy some calves, some cattle for the farm. And so I had this friend, uh, lived over in Harrodsburg, a one-armed man. He was a true character. Uh, some of you may know him. I guess it's all right to say his name, Winfield Gabbard. And he was like a father to me, and we were really close. And he had an old trailer, horse trailer, that had been burned out, caught on fire, but he'd put a floor in it. And he had a trailer hitch on his old Oldsmobile. He had an Oldsmobile that was probably 20 or 30 years old mm-hmm. that he drove around. Big old boat, you know, Oldsmobile. And I asked him if I could borrow his trailer and his car to take uh, to the stockyards to buy some calves with my son. He said, sure, sure. So I borrowed his, his trailer. And this was a July time of summer. And it was hot and it was dry. It hadn't rained in three weeks. And I had just built this big lake uh, that would put catfish in. And so I had a little time to kill. So I unhooked the trailer and I took it over to my farm and unhooked the trailer and drove down by the dam on my farm. And uh, there were some big rocks that the bulldozer had left on the dam. And I had kind of a gully in my farm that I wanted to fill. So I loaded up this huge, humongous rocks and put them on the tailgate of the Oldsmobile, and took them over to this draw, you know, where I threw them to kind of fill in the draw to stop erosion and stuff. But as I drove out, there was an old wire fence, which I hadn't noticed, a barbed wire fence that was on the ground. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, wagon, big Oldsmobile, was the was dragging the ground mm-hmm. from the way the <laughs> rocks. And I drove across that fence. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't know it. But I had evidently punctured a hole in the gas tank. Oh. <laughs> so 
we throw those rocks in there and did a little work for an hour or so, and then we hooked up the trailer, and I had my son. He, he was about six or seven years old, so you have to imagine this, and very polite, quiet boy for the most part, and, <laughs> like me. And he, we, we drove all over, and, you know, and so I thought, well, the nice thing for me to do as we went through Stanford uh, was to fill uh, Winfield's car up with gas. Mm -hmm. So we filled that baby up to the very top gas tank and it, it held you know, about 25 gallons of gas <laughs> and and we drove into the stockyards and it was very busy busier than i'd ever seen before i guess because of the drought people were selling their cattle mm -hmm. or something and it was a good time to buy and uh and so um i i drove in there and and uh got out of the car and stretched and i heard something popping yeah and i looked underneath my car Winfield's car, and and there was uh, smoke and flames coming out of the gas tank. So I said, "Oh my gosh!" And we were we were wedged right in all these big trucks, you know, fifty thousand dollar tractor trailer yeah, trucks yeah. and everything. So I told my son real quick. I said, "You run in the office and you tell him to call the fire department that there's a fire." Yeah. So he, but daddy, daddy, I'm scared. You know, I said, just go in there and tell those ladies that there's a fire out there and they need to call the fire department. So, you know, he was nearly crying and snibbling and he, he jogged up the way there and ran in the building. So last I saw him and I very quickly unhooked the trailer and backed it up out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then I took off running and I went in that stockyards and they were selling cattle. And I mean, if you've never been to a stockyard, it's kind of like a, a basketball gymnasium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was full to the ceiling of people. And they were backed out the door, and they were standing room only. And I remember pushing my way through the crowd and got up to the fence there where the arena was, where the cattle were coming through, and they were in the middle of selling a herd of cattle. Mm -hmm. And I just started yelling, stop, stop, fire, fire. And finally, the auctioneer stopped in the middle of a sale. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what, what is this? What, what the hell is going on here, you know? All this stuff, and everybody got quiet. And I said, my, my car is on fire, and it's about ready to explode and blow the hell out of every car out there. <laughs> you never seen so many people. These old farmers, overweight farmers in overalls, <laughs> jogging, pushing, knocking people down. It's like going in a crowded theater and yelling yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. They all start. Boy, they moved their trucks and trailers, and by that time, there was smoke rolling out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, they threw those babies in reverse. Everybody was out there, and... <laughs> As soon as they got the cars and trucks away from mine, uh -huh. it looked like the atomic bomb over Hiroshima. <laughs> that thing exploded. Glass blew out the oh. windows. There was a there was an atomic mushroom that yeah, went up in the sky, a cloud, yeah. and it blew that car off the ground. <laughs> the tires caught on fire. Yeah, you know, black smoke. It sent shards of metal every which way into the neighboring field. Yeah, and it just turned into a blaze. The whole field just turned <laughs> up and just started wow. catching on fire. And then my son came back, and he was kind of scared to death and snibbling and crying. And uh, and I said, well, I'm going to have told my son I'm going to have to call, you know, my wife or somebody to come pick us up, uh -huh. you know, because we no longer have a car. The car, <laughs> car is blown up. And uh, the stockyard man, or there was a guy that was, no, he was a, he was a dispatcher mm -hmm. in Stanford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, what do you think you're doing? He said, you ain't going nowhere. Well, I had filled up when I was at the gas station yeah. uh, two cans of gasoline yeah. that were in the car for my lawnmower. Uh -huh. And I had taken those and set those outside the car because I knew if it caught on fire, I didn't want more explosions. Yeah. He said, I see them gas cans there. I go, what do you mean? He said, you set this fire. Uh -huh. You did this intentional. Yeah. I go, what? I said, you're crazy, man. He goes, oh, no. He goes, you're under arrest. That's what he said to you and my son. He says, you're under arrest. I'm calling the police. Yeah. You know. I said, well, call them. I said, I didn't do anything wrong. He said, you see them gas cans there? I'm taking them up in the office for evidence, he said. <laughs> I said, for evidence. I said, well, you got two gas cans for my lawnmower for evidence. Yeah. And my car's blown all the hell, and it doesn't even belong to me. <laughs> and I said, you know. And so here comes the fire trucks. You yeah. know, they had a, like a five alarm fire. Every fire truck in Stanford and mm -hmm. surrounding counties came in. Here comes the state police yeah. and the county boys mm -hmm. and everything. And they take me and my son and put us in the back of a cruiser, yeah. you know, and interrogate us, you know. Like, what? approximately, what time did you get here? Yeah. Like, well, why did you, where are the matches? I said, well, what matches, you know? You mm -hmm. set the gas tank on fire. I said, do you really think? 
This is my friend's car yeah. that I would take his car, and put it in the <laughs> stockyards next to all these other trucks, and light a match in the gas run tank and run and and with my son, and then run everybody to yell fire just just for fun, <laughs> you know. So it was it was really something, and I'll never forget that day. And they let us go. The police let us go. Mm -hmm. They finally and well, against our better judgment, I guess we'll <laughs> let you go on your way. You did blow this place up. <laughs> you, know, you did set everything on fire, and you know, you you know, you done all this damage and everything. <laughs> then the then the part was to go over, and I remember knocking on knock. My wife picked me up, and she was mad at me. You know, oh, of course, yeah. so, always mad at me for something. You know, of course, <laughs> this was a great excuse. You know how I endangered her child, and, <laughs> and so. I had to go over that afternoon, that evening, and knock on his door, and he came to the door. Hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> How's my car? Like, well, well, there's a little problem. So I said, I blew the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I burned down a stockyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. He said, come in, come in. He was, he was kind of a bald head, you know, and mm -hmm. he was wiping his head and got a washcloth. And all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he like, popped oh, out in sweat. For so and, many years. Yeah. And the funny thing was, he was a character. He lived mm -hmm. in the house with his father-in-law. Yeah. He had invited his father-in-law to come in and live with him instead of being in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. Very kind gentleman, yeah. young man. And he, his father-in-law owned an insurance company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, he had filed a claim <laughs> right there in the living room with his father-in-law for yeah. the car. Yeah. You know. <laughs> of course, he was trying to get all he could for it and this, that, and the other. But, oh, Lord, I felt so bad. You know, yeah. I felt on every level, you know, mm -hmm. I felt bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We've all, so that was a story. We've all done that. We've, we've all, all burned mistakes. the stockyard down before. We all may not have blown up the car, but we've <laughs> yeah. all yeah. Made, mistakes. made mistakes before. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what mistake I made, you know. But yeah. put, putting rocks in the back of the car, I guess, was part of it. Yeah. yeah. That was probably the biggie. Yeah. Trying to work overtime. <laughs> well, that's that's a good little good little story of, of your days past, I guess. Yes, you know. yes. Yeah. We all we all have a many. Yeah, yeah. Well we'll we'll get another one. Uh, on another time, I guess. Yes. But uh, but anyway, I hope you I hope you enjoyed that little story if you're listening. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit today when we were looking at Kentucky history, not not necessarily the history of Mr. Pope, yes. but um, thank you, but, <laughs> but Kentucky history. And I've been reading this book called The Political Beginnings of Kentucky, and it was published in 1889. Mm -hmm. So this book is a hundred years old, mm -hmm. and it was written about a hundred years. After Kentucky was kind of founded in that, mm -hmm. so and it was written by John Mason Brown, and I can't really say that um, you know there there since this book was written, there may be some things that were proven, disproven, and, and likewise. Mm -hmm. So there may be some discrepancies. Uh, you know, <laughs> for this show, we'll go with yeah, it. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know, I, I can't, I haven't, or nor will I ever have the Kentucky, time to read. What's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be able to read. You expect all. us to criticize? It? Yeah. All of you know, Kentucky history. <laughs> this but, guy wrote a book. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kentucky was formed, basically, or being formed, I should say, during the Revolutionary War, you know, being settled, and, and there's many battles and, and so forth, but we're not going to really get into that. Um, I like to get into the one about Stanford, you know, which was really a Revolutionary War battle. But when Benjamin Logan sent the women out after all the animals mm -hmm, had been killed, yeah, yeah. he said, to get some water, he said, we're thirsty. We're thirsty to get some said, why not send the men out? He said, I'm going to send the women. And they killed all the women and everything. Yeah, and that, which, was, that was the founding of Stanford. You, you know, they, they had found one underneath a cow mm -hmm. that had been killed and fell over on her yeah. in the mud. And, 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 and we'll get to Benjamin Logan. He so plays, it kinda, yeah, he he plays, plays right part. in there. Yeah. He plays right yeah. into the story. But the thing is, with the colonies, you know, the colonies are all on the coast, and they're fighting this battle. And, right. And you have the Western Front of the Revolutionary War, which would involve Kentucky, but you don't hear about that as much. So the big thing is, Virginia, right on the coast, they're not too worried about what's going on in Kentucky. No. You know, and it's not that big a deal. And I mean, we're going to kind of run Virginia through the dirt here a little bit, and that's all yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> they deserve it. Spit on them. <laughs> and if you're listening from Virginia, we, we love We're Virginia. sorry. We love yeah. you. But... You know, we <laughs> the ancestors. They really, they really, they really. I don't have anything against Virginia. No, I kind of like, like it. Bad. It's yeah, not I like deal. it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Thomas Jefferson and uh, uh, Patrick Henry. They they were that kind of the only two people who were really given Kentucky a new mind, and they kind of had a plan for Kentucky. Thomas and, Jefferson started the first commercial uh, vineyard over the Appalachian Mountains down here, at mm -hmm. Camp Nelson. Mm -hmm. Had some fine wine sent back several kegs of it every year mm -hmm. back to Virginia. They said mm -hmm. it was the finest wine they drank. There you go. 
So and he's gonna you know, spend a lot of time in Paris, knocking yeah. down some, some booze. booze. <laughs> <laughs> Four or five years yeah. worth. Yeah. You know. yeah. What, and, what, was he, he was was he the third president? I think so. Yeah, and I think his daughter too was a big was, was a big it, drinker. Well, <laughs> she did some time in Paris as well. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's another that's another story. But so in seventeen seventy nine, a, ju- a judicial tribunal was held in Harrodsburg, and this is kind of the first act uh, to examine Kentucky. They get they get, gave Isaac Shelby some land in around Stanford, and this was kind of the first organization or the first kind of meeting, of the, if you want to call it, the office uh, meeting of the, the land office of the Commonwealth, mm-hmm. uh, and so forth, and that kind of sets the ground, which we know. Isaac Shelby was the first governor of Kentucky and, and so forth, and the fifth governor. They get together and they discuss. Uh, there's a, a man named Richard Calloway, John Todd, and they they are representing Kentucky at, at, out of Williamsburg, which mm-hmm. you know, at this time Williamsburg was the capital of Virginia. Mm-hmm. And so you think about, and Williamsburg is basically right on. Uh, I mean, pretty much on the coast. Yes. Uh, and so, in order to you know, communicate with those people. We were talking about a lot of travel mm-hmm. and so forth. But so forth. We'll get to that. They sure couldn't send smoke signals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at this <laughs> meeting, they they incorporated Boonesboro. They incorporated Louisville, um, and you know, things were kind of being set. And uh, legislator in Virginia uh, made Kentucky into three counties: uh, Fayette, Jefferson, and Lincoln. At the same time, you know, Hendrix was doing his thing too with the Transylvania Company. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is all. He was trying to claim it as a as a colony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the thing about Kentucky is really close to being Finn Castle. Mm-hmm. We were really close to being the state of Finn Castle. Mm-hmm. And I mean, personal opinion, I think it was a good bullet to dodge. I like Kentucky better than mm-hmm. Finn Castle, but that's probably biased. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't. They almost named it Transylvania. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, which that would be, you know, I guess Transylvania Company mm-hmm. and, and so right. forth. Uh, that, that's that's pretty cool or pretty unique. I didn't they know that. take in part of Tennessee, too, while they did it. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> well, thank goodness we did not bite on that. Yeah. Well, he bought out the Indians, you know, and sent Boone. You know, mm-hmm. that's where Boone got his big mm-hmm. ticket, mm-hmm. blazing the trail of Boonesboro and mm-hmm. all that. And giving and, trinkets to the Indians, <laughs> making them sign, saying they owned everything. And, yeah. Um, so the District of Kentucky, of Kentucky of the Commonwealth of Virginia is basically what we what we had, and for the first time, I guess this is kind of the switch from pioneers to frontiersmen, yeah. uh, and then on to you know to say it's citizens uh, of Kentucky is what we'll get to eventually. But they organized a civil and a military power, and, and by mean that they actually had some sort of to say government in Kentucky, mm-hmm. and not to say it was a good and. And functionable, but it was that they had a meeting, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they established. I guess you could call them lieutenants. Um, John Todd, mm-hmm. he was the Fayette County lieutenant. Mm-hmm. Uh, the colonel of the militia, or or Benjamin Logan was the chief rank in Lincoln, and John Floyd in Jefferson County. So, mm-hmm. and you, if you've seen a map of these, these counties are huge. I huge. mean, they're That's they're right. massive. So to say this one person is kind of in charge of these whole places, and and. and is a bit you know absurd mm-hmm. to say the least, but it was what they had to deal with. Uh, but as they did this, that's when immigration began to increase. Mm-hmm. People started flooding in, and you know people became more comfortable. The Native American attacks and battles were beginning to hold off and not be as you know be as uh, a big of a threat. And of course, that they still happened, but mm-hmm. the, the send the women out to milk the cows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this under control. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the first tax. It was uh, established as far as Kentuckians. It was uh, ten pounds of tobacco mm-hmm. was was imposed mm-hmm. in eight, 1783 in Lincoln County. Mm-hmm. Lincoln was first to start getting the taxes going. Uh, um, oh yeah. But what what hindered what hindered what was the big holdup? I'll ask you this question. What was the big problem with Kentucky at the moment as far as political or you know government? What was it? when we kind of touched it earlier, but. Well, was it the barrier of the Appalachian Mountains? Yeah, you yeah. know they had to cross over that, and that was no, you know, mm-hmm. no easy ride. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and when every time they wanted to file land claims, they mm-hmm. had to go over the mountains, and mm-hmm. 
And uh, there's a little problem with Indians, you know, picking them yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, that was an, that was an issue. Or wildcats or bears jumping, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> getting drunk, falling off a cliff. Probably a real reason. You know, they Kentucky were making Bourbon. the whiskey. They're making, making the whiskey, whiskey you know, all that excess that, corn. All that excess <laughs> corn, you know. Uh, but yes, that's that's the way it was. I mean, they had they had a legal matter or whatever it may be that. Uh, that, that they needed to take care of, and there was no legal authority. No. And it's going to take a month. I mean, months to get right. from Stanford right. or, or Louisville even to Virginia, yeah. which was the governing body of Kentucky at the time. It made me think about that time. Again, Fort Logan, you know, we're here in Lincoln County, and how <laughs> Benjamin Logan, his fort was under attack, and he tells all of his people they're short of guns. And things. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. <laughs> and he jumps over the wall, takes off running. I'm going to go to Virginia, and I'm going to get a bunch of, you know, troops and bring them back here. And you know, wait. You, you, know, you guys hold the fort for about two months. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. And so he slips out, cuts out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that ordered the women out to milk the cows because he wanted to drink a milk. Oh. Killed them all. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was Native it. American that was it. Pioneer. But like he had to, he had to go. He's he, the most prominent person in in Lincoln County mm-hmm, history, mm-hmm. no question. Well, yeah, well, one of, we're definitely one of the one of the founding fathers, if you want to call him that. Oh, but yeah, oh, with yeah. Boone and and oh, Aaron yeah. and those them, them fellas. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was the thing. And this was what this this meeting that they had at Harrodsburg was the first kind of meeting that they kind of discussed all this stuff, mm-hmm. and they said. Kentucky needs to be its separate state, and and but you know, you, you, they met at Danville. You know, oh yeah, well, well yeah, we'll get to all okay. those conventions. Those are all coming up. And, and it's, said my throat was dry, so they came from Harrodsburg over Danville <laughs> to the inn there and started drinking. Oh, Grayson, said, Grayson, Grayson Tavern. Tavern. Yep, yep. And they all got high. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Let's make this place, man. Let's make our own state. We don't need Virginia." <laughs> yeah, Virginia, and, and all these people. Hell with them. <laughs> And speaking of a bunch of potato thumpers, oh, and speaking of <laughs> religion, yeah, you had yeah. all the Calvinists oh, coming yeah. from Virginia, oh, and yeah. you had the Catholics coming from uh, Maryland and mm-hmm. settling in Marion that's and Nelson, right. that's very good, Washington County. That's yeah, good. there you go. Florida but anyway, Ohio. <laughs> the you know the, they had this con- they had a constellation of militia, the militia, mm-hmm. which that was the first time they met in Danville, mm-hmm. and uh, which Benjamin Logan called them all up and said, hey. Boys, we, gonna, yeah. we have all these Native American attacks. Yeah. I'm having to run to Virginia right. every time. Right. <laughs> Jump over the walls of the fort <laughs> and run up there. But I can't trying be, to get help. You know, <laughs> be gone for two months. <laughs> we can't. We can't. My tater patch. You know. <laughs> my pumpkins. My pumpkins. Pumpkins. Oh yeah, he left the pumpkins. Let them rot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's, we, that started the foundation for Lincoln County. There you go. Let me tell you. In Kentucky, you know, we're dumb built. as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> we're built, built, built on. Everybody 100 miles. <laughs> built on rotten tomatoes or rotten, <laughs> rotten pumpkins. pumpkins. Yeah. Uh, Isn't there a band rotten, throwing rotten pumpkins? Smashing pumpkins. Smashing pumpkins. 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 There you go. That's that probably pretty. came. Yeah, it came from him. Smashing <laughs> pumpkins. But anyway. The, anyway. What's the one about the crows you know, on the line or something? Oh, uh, uh, black crows. Black crows. I think, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's Calling right. crows. No. No, no it's black, no, black, black crows. crows. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, all these Native American attacks at the time, and that they were getting less, but like Benjamin Logan was like, hey, we got, he, he, they was, he was finding counting out. Counting crows. Counting crows, you're yeah, right. Yeah, counting, counting crows. crows. I like them. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I used to listen anyway, to that. That, that, that. I hope you're not here it. for our musical <laughs> yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> But uh, we want to say there's no props, you know. We're just is, talking no. off the cuff yeah. here, man, from our vast knowledge, <laughs> our so, lack of it. <laughs> so these, these Benjamin Logan, he keeps you know these Native American attacks. He finds out that they're being planned, and he goes up and calls his militia and says, "Hey guys, hey, we boy. gotta rally up and get." Mm-hmm. It's, guess what though? This is this to me. The is, Revolutionary is, War is raging. You know? <laughs> we need some help over here. Yeah. And he says, you know, we got a problem. Mm-hmm. We need help. Mm-hmm. We need to call up a militia. We need to call mm-hmm. the troops. But guess what? We can't. Yeah. Because of because of Virginia and Williamsburg right. is where we need to go and right. get this done formally, which is kind of to me <laughs> yeah. is like who cares if you know if you they have probably this... in Williamsburg they probably looked out the window and saw these Kentuckians walking up the street. <laughs> Lock the doors. Yeah. We're they closed need for help the day. Again. <laughs> yeah, they need help again. We're trying, we're trying to form whiskey. a country, boys. We're trying yeah. to form a country. Yeah. You guys need to you go. You guys back are up, up here. <laughs> Yokel locals. Yeah. Trying to 
<laughs> what they wanted, and, and they wanted to form like a military tax so yes, they could get a militia right. and all this stuff, and they didn't have the power to do it. Right. I guess they thought it would. In my mind, you say, "Hey, well, you can run around yeah. and start telling them." But call, yeah. call up William Willie and say, "Hey, boys, yeah. we got some, we got some fine. We got to do whiskey, man. You'd be you know? rich. You have all the militia you want." Uh, but then I guess Seriously. they were afraid people would be. They like, were taxing in Virginia, and mm-hmm. that's why they came down here because the revenues couldn't yeah. catch them. That, and that's well, how bourbon go. whiskey got started. Yeah. And and that's kind of the thought. Maybe that like they, they were afraid if they go around and start saying, "Hey, come join the militia." Mm-hmm. They're like, "How are you going to pay us?" Well, we can't. Uh, pay but we can, do a, we can do a Loose a women. tax. <laughs> yeah, we can do us a tax. <laughs> like, no, we don't want no taxes. You know, <laughs> yeah. screw you. If we fight them. Find them on your own. Yeah. Uh, this is, by the way, the history we teach children in <laughs> Lincoln County. These are ver- certified uh, history teachers talking here. This is the way we history is to be taught. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of like the class discussions we have. There we go. The children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, tell them all their ancestors are a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> so. So anyway, make them feel good. Yeah, make them feel good. <laughs> While we're catching Corona. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Anyway, sorry. anyway, anyway, that was a low blow. <laughs> they they had uh, true though. So so in Kentucky, there was about six hundred and sixty two citizens in Kentucky, which is not a lot. Yeah. you know when you think about it, it's uh, crowded. Boone but, said, "I'm moving. If you see <laughs> yeah. the smoke of a man's chimney, it's time to move." Get that's on what, out. That's what he told his wife. He said, "If I see smoke of a neighbor's chimney, it's time to move." Man, <laughs> so I even whiff it in the air. So they they kind of you know they kind of were hitting roadblocks to obvious things you yeah. know the people in Virginia are fighting a Trail fighting a revolution yeah. yeah and and they're trying to get they, there's only like 662 people uh, well but four prior to this meeting in 1783 there had been an attempt to get Kentucky in a state but it was way premature I mean there's only you know that's what I mean by 662 people <laughs> we they, want a country yet <laughs> yeah they, we want to be a state <laughs> well, yeah we are we're ready to be Any a state and they're yet. like guys. We're fighting the yeah. revolution. Yeah, I mean, we can't, we, you know, we, we, we're yeah. glad you're eager. Easy, boys. But you're going to wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. So it was very premature. You, know, you talk about those trails, roadblocks. And yes, all. yes. You know, that that was started by buffalo. Yeah. And yeah. by wandering herds of elk and different things. And then the Indians made it the warrior's path, mm-hmm. you know, over through the mountains and the gaps and so forth. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and then Boone improved it a little bit, cutting a few trees mm-hmm. out of the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bushes, hacking some bushes <laughs> yeah. with fifty men. Yeah, so so I mean, whenever they were sober, like they didn't have they didn't have taxes or money to no. make a road no. better or anything no. like that. This is no. you know they're they're scrabble, scrambling around. You know, in uh, early America, mm-hmm. in in the east, mm-hmm. in certain places, you were required. They didn't have money to improve roads, and mm-hmm. you know what roads there were were toll roads that people bought and improved, mm-hmm. and then they they taxed you by usage of it mm-hmm. and they owned it i mean the government didn't get the money yeah. it was a person's private road yeah and but they also had that every person in eastern kentucky too that used uh every male in the community was supposed to donate so many days work improving the to roads, the road yeah. to the roads wow and you were huh. it was just like a nice. draft yeah and you were come on boys get out of the yeah. house you wake up work. You know, get out of bed. <laughs> you know, get off the juice, Today, puker your... slop. You know, come on, come on, get Today, your shovels. Today's your day to get. <laughs> today's your day. <laughs> Pour the mud for the next yeah, next three weeks. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be shoveling mud. <laughs> so, after this first meeting of Benjamin Logan and the militia, he sends everybody back and says, "Go out and get some delegates." Mm-hmm. You know, our population's growing. We need some delegates. Get we need some to get deli. back here. Go to the deli. And uh, we're gonna meet again. And and which is what they do. They meet again in 1784. And, and it's it's you think about the travel. Like mm-hmm. you think if we had a, a meeting of some kind of organization, if we were trying to organize something, we could meet every other week, once a week, mm-hmm. twice a week if possible. But they literally could not meet that often. Like they would have these meetings like a year, one year, another year, six months. Like mm-hmm. they kept on having these meetings, and that's what it was. It's travel. You know, you can't plan a meeting. You can get on Zoom and do your meeting, right. you know. They're going anyway. to Grayson's Tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, well, I'll get to this a funny point yeah. about that in a minute. They call up another meeting in the next year in December, <laughs> yeah. and, and they have uh, William Fleming was presi- presided, Fleming, and Thomas yeah. Todd was the secretary of the convention, which Thomas Todd is the first um, Fleming's Supreme bird. Justice mm-hmm. of the United States mm-hmm. from uh, west of Appalachia mm-hmm. and from Kentucky. Uh, interesting fellow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so a large number of the de- delegates were from Virginia, and they 
Um, you know, they they were kind of really bound to this way of Virginia. You know, they wanted uh, Commonwealth was that was a was a thing, but they all agreed, of course, that the problem their problems was distance, and and it was a big hindrance, and, and so forth. But they were so connected to Virginia, it's almost like they didn't want to you know make Virginia mad, or or, mm-hmm. or they wanted to make sure they did everything through Virginia. Nice and peaceful, happy, go lucky. Mm-hmm. Let's let's just uh, proceed with what what Virginia wants us to do, how they want us to do it, and that kept that was the that was their first like meeting, and they didn't get anything done really. Uh, more or less, they said, "Hey, we do want to be a state, but let's wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 see what Virginia wants us to do." And they kicked the can down the road, uh, and again, what they call another meeting in like six months and say, hey, let's have another meeting in six months. We'll go go back to the... So they said to go back to their counties and kind of get more delegates and blah, blah, blah. And they go, which at this time, there's only four counties. Nelson had been made. Invite more to the tavern. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, so they meet again uh, and they plan for April, but they end up meeting in uh, May. Yeah. <laughs> and they all decide that they should write a constitution for the new state of Kentucky. And they want, of course, to do the parliamentary procedures and all this and that. And guess what? It, ta- it takes them a week to even get things going. Oh, yeah. You know what? I wonder what, you know, at Grayson's Tavern, what could have been going on. Uh, maybe some. When's maybe... the last time you were drunk? <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to kick back in? <laughs> sure, I don't know. <laughs> it took me three days to get here. <laughs> Take me a week to get home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so anyway, they were all these. You know, and, and to, to think, I mean, they were all. Well, these are these are our founding fathers. I don't fathers even remember where I'm from. <laughs> Someone help me. <laughs> yeah, so, so it took them. And that's good corn whiskey. Nine days, nine days to declare a resolution. Mm-hmm. And I'll read uh, read these first one. Resolved. Uh, this these are, these are from the, from the from the notes, I guess. Yeah. Resolved unanimously, as the option of this committee, that a petition be presented to the assembly, praying that the said district may be established into a state separate from Virginia. I imagine Virginia wanted to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could see that. I, I mean, too. well, you think about the hillbillies from Kentucky. <laughs> uh, you know, that they're morons. <laughs> <laughs> They're sitting there in Virginia. Of course, I mean, this is 1785, you know, so the yeah. U.S. is established. Mm-hmm. And which you say established, but, I mean, there's still many Revolutionary things. Revolutionary War just ended in 1785. Yeah. yeah, so these things are going on. And here you got Kentucky coming over every, mm-hmm. every, every other few week. months. <laughs> every other week. Like, hey, I'm guys. tired of walking over them mountains. <laughs> Could you all, you all, this? <laughs> and... and <laughs> They're slaughtering our women. Can you send some militia over here? Or make us a state so we can do this on Mm -hmm. our own? Uh, But anyway, so the next part was resolved unanimously as the opinion of this committee that the district, when established into a state, ought to be taken into the union with the United States of America and enjoy equal privilege in common with the said states. I'm surprised at that. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah, equal equal privilege. (laughs) With Virginia? Yeah. I mean, yeah. (laughs) So at the end of the meeting, uh, the petition was made, and it was sent to Virginia. Sent to Virginia as the people of the District of Kentucky. Of Kentucky. From then, they wanted Kentucky to be known as the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, more, more was discussed at this meeting and decided that they would then send, uh, they would again talk, talk to Virginia and who to send. That was their big, big thing. Um, and that they would choose 30 delegates from the counties to assemble at Danville again. And this would be... The first, I guess, if you want to call it the Constitutional Convention, mm-hmm. and then they would because so they're sending a letter mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, we want to be a state. Yep, we're meeting, and we're going to start. We're going to yep. get us up, get the things going." Go. Danville is actually the first capital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was very interesting with Kentucky, uh, they wanted to it be based on population. They, like, they mm-hmm. wanted their rep- representation to be based on population, mm-hmm. not kind of via county, which is what Virginia had. You know, you had a representative from this county, you had a representative mm-hmm. from this county. They wanted to be based on their population. <clears throat> yeah. People are scattered out all over Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think about somebody yeah. being scattered all across, say, Lincoln County at the time, right. and they have one person. Right. You know, Benjamin Logan's the Robertson representative from Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, and you have people way over here. There's there. only like 200 people in Robertson County today. It, yeah, it's a it's, it's the a smallest small, county, small. small in size mm-hmm. and small in population. Yeah, because um, everybody's moved out. Mm-hmm. So to to end it up here, and we'll we'll wrap this up because there's plenty more to talk about. We we're we're going to talk about the conventions 
and those th- those things that happens in the conventions because that that you know they get there's this back and forth between Virginia and Kentucky kind of like hey you know we're meeting uh, and then Virginia's like oh you got to meet by this deadline and then it's not like they're getting on the interstate and driving you know they have complications some wars break out some you know wars with the Native right. Americans and so forth and we'll, you know they they want it. you talk about Robinson County mm-hmm. having such a small school and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basketball team had like six players. You know, like, <laughs> everybody's like, a starter. Everybody's a starter. <laughs> yeah. And when them fouls out, you know, that's it. <laughs> We're going so all the, more all, the, all the all the places like Maysville and mm-hmm. Augusta and everything, they all wanted to go up there and play <laughs> Flemingsburg. You know, they yeah. play Robertson County. Man, it was a sure big W <laughs> cool. in the college. Five on four, yeah, we can five, get them. <laughs> yeah, five on four, <laughs> fifteen on four. We, you know, <laughs> we wear them down. One boy to yeah, foul we out wear one. them down. <laughs> Trip a couple of them and you know, <laughs> break <laughs> their legs. <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> they went down to two. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the way it was done. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Coach of the year. Coach of the year, you did it. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, we'll, we'll end with this, these statements here that they made <laughs> to resolve their issues. Or resolved that this convention recommend it to their constituents to elect deputies in their respective counties to meet at Danville on the second Monday of August next to serve mm-hmm. in the convention and to continue adjournment to the first day of April next to take further under their consideration the state of the district. Resolved unanimously that the election of deputies for the per- proposed convention ought to be on the principles of equal representation. Resolved that the petition to be to the assembly for establishing the district into a state and the Everill resolves of the former and present convention upon which the petition to the assembly for establishing this district in a state into a state and the several and Everill the, means everybody agrees. <laughs> Everill <laughs> Hey Everill, come over here. You're Sign agree, this petition. You agree? Everyone. Yeah. Everill. Put, put Everill it. here. <laughs> Put an X. Pass right another here. mug. Yeah. Put another X. <laughs> they probably we have, all agree. We have this petition. We got twenty X's here. We all, we all Nobody agree. can read it. <laughs> probably Henry Clay drew it up. <laughs> oh Lord. So together. So that's the history of Kentucky in a nutshell. And then you wonder why we are. You know. There you go. Let it go. There you go. There and you go. so, so they did it's that. Official. It's official. <laughs> it's official. Here, here. The, the, Skull horse race. <laughs> Lose some more money. Yeah. So when we return, yes. we will talk a little more. Well, actually, we will have Everill. A, <laughs> I'm going to name my next child oh, Everill. I mean, oh. like everything Everill. Yeah. Everill, get over here. <laughs> Everill, mow the yard. <laughs> it's getting high. Yeah, it's getting high, man. 